So let's just relive some of the best rivalry moments, shall we? Yes. Yes. Back to 84. I remember it well. I was one. Boston trailing in the series, two games to one. Kurt Rambis is going in for a layup and then was clotheslined by <laughs> Kevin McHale. Get some, Rambis. Let's go. The play would end up being a turning point for the Seas. They'd rally to win the game and then win the series in seven games. A couple of future NBA coaches there in Rambis, the Rex Specs. Yep. Those are proper Rex Specs. They really are. Number nine, still 1984. Game two of the NBA Finals. Okay. Boston down two. Lakers had the ball, 18 seconds left. James Worthy, cross-court pass. Stolen by Gerald Henderson. He would make the layup and tie the game, and it sent it to overtime. Seas would outscore the Lakers 11-8 in overtime to tie the series at one apiece. We're going to go a little more modern with number eight. It was right. the 2010 finals, game seven. Kobe Bryant recorded 23 points and 15 rebounds, helped the Lakers with their, to get their 16th NBA championship. Ron Artest, he wasn't Metal World Peace back then, hit a three-pointer about a minute to go, gave the Lakers that lead. It was the final dagger, and they would win in game seven at the Staples Center. Amazing. People always say Kobe got his rings because of Shaq. He got two more post-Shaq. Correct. Built the team around him. Go Saul! Uh, number seven, 2008, NBA Finals Game 6. KG, 26 points, 14 rebounds. Celtics win their first NBA title since 1986. 39-point win over the Lakers, second largest in Finals history. But none of that matters because all that does is that anything's possible. Anything's possible. Anything's possible! All right, number six is uh, 1969 finals, game four. Boston used a triple pick play to get Sam James open. He shot the ball at the wrong foot and avoided Wilt Chamberlain, but then the ball hit the front of the rim, bounced off the back of the rim, finally dropped in. There it is, members bounce, right? Shot, tied the series at 2-2, and the Celtics win in seven games. Oh, triple pick. Number five, 62 finals, game three. Now we're into Rob G's era. Four seconds remaining in the game. Tied at 115. Sam Jones attempted an inbounds. Half court to Bob Cousy. However, the logo stepped in, stole the ball. Game winning layup for the buzzer. You think there's kids at home like, there was TV in 1952? There kind of wasn't. <laughs> uh, how about number four? More 1962. NBA Finals Game 7. Celtics, Lakers. It was actually the first finals to go seven games between these two. Bill Russell had 30 points and 40, 40 boards. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Uh, this remains one of just two game sevens in NBA Finals history to go to OT. The Celtics would win. 85, number three, game six. After falling to the Celtics in eight NBA Finals between 59 and 84, the Lakers finally beat the Celtics. Kareem Worthy Magic added a triple-double. Lakers win the title. 111, 100, and that ushered in one of the great eras in NBA history. Showtime. Showtime. Oh, man, back to 1969. Okay, I'll take your word for it. NBA Finals Game 7, Jerry West, 42 points, triple dub. Was trying to just will the Lakers to victory. It was not to be because they were clinging to a one-point lead late in the fourth, and then Don Nelson shot from the free throw line, just hit high off the rim and would go in. Yeah, and the Celtics win. Bill Russell gets his 11th and final NBA championship in his final season. 87 finals, game four, trailing by one, seven seconds to play. Magic Johnson, baby hook, lead, two seconds left. Would go down as one of the famous shots in NBA finals history. The Lakers one by one to take a commanding 3-1 series lead two historical franchises.